So today we're gonna to be making a conversation out of the accomplishments of Isaiah Collier so far. I'll go ahead and be the first person to say it. it's a very small sample size, but it has looked very promising. Obviously we saw him in the preseason, we saw him in summer league, and his injury in preseason kept him out of the beginning of the season when we would have hoped to see more time of him splitting minutes with Keontae George, but we saw something that was very impressive in my personal opinion, and I wanted to share it with you guys to see what you guys thought about it. With that being said, it's your boy Ray Hoops. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this one. So Isaiah Collier is a point guard between 6'2", 6'3", about 210 pounds, coming from USC, and he ended up falling in draft stock because of his turnover proneness and also his proclivity to uh, be injured during one part of the season. Because previously, he was expected to be a very high lottery pick, at one point expected to be a top pick in top three at the very least, coming out of high school, but things didn't really pan out that way, with him landing in the teens of the NBA draft for the first round, nevertheless. But because of what we ended up seeing in the preseason and more so in summer league, things looked really promising because he had something that Keontae George quite simply doesn't. And that's significant experience playing the point guard position. Yes, he's turnover prone, but at the same time, Keontae George is also turnover prone. So is Jordan Clarkson and some other people on the roster. So the thought that I had immediately when it comes to Isaiah Collier was going to be that he was going to follow a development path similar to Colin Sexton, specifically last year where we saw him put up career highs in the assist category and also took a dive in his turnovers and became extremely efficient from the field, even though he had been previous. The thing with Isaiah Collier though, is that it's going to take more time because he doesn't have a three point jumper. It looks a little weird when he shoots it and there's a little bit of a struggle for consistency when it comes to that aspect of his game. Inside the three point line, he's a lot more efficient going downhill. He has the ability to make dump off passes. He had one really good pass in their most recent game against the Spurs where he dives down in a pick and roll with John Collins popping out to the three-point line and Wemby and Chris Paul sliding down into the lane to cut him off. Now on that read, Keontae George is more likely to attempt to get that shot off regardless. But the thing about Collier was that he knew that Wemby's bearing down on him. He knew that Chris Paul was right there cutting off a certain angle for him. And so he decided to whip that back out to where he assumed John Collins would have been. And John Collins was certainly there. We can't just talk about that, so let's talk about both of these games in particular. Now, he did finally make a debut against the Milwaukee Bucks. He played only four minutes in that blowout. We lost 100 to 123. He had one assist, missed one shot, and then had a turnover, so there was really nothing to go off of from that game in particular. He didn't look like a cone on defense, and I think that his effort stands out to me particularly because yes, he's not the most massively sized person, but he gives off the Colin Sexton energy when it comes to being a guy that exhibits a lot of effort on that side of the ball and it makes up a lot of times for his lack of just overall size when it comes to certain switches and certain matchups that they encounter. I would like to prematurely and somewhat overzealously present to you guys my personal opinion on Isaiah Collier, or a prediction rather. I think that Keontae George over the next 10 to 15-ish games will show that he is not going to be the ideal point guard for the Utah Jazz. I previously thought that it was going to be too much to put onto him, considering the fact that he didn't play point guard in college or any semblance of it at that level for him to come in and then just be expected to pick things up really, really quickly. It just wasn't gonna happen in my mind. And we're seeing turnover proneness. We're seeing him also miss a lot of shots. So it's not so much, oh, he's missing reads, but he's hitting the shots that he's taking. No, he's missing reads and missing the shots that he's taking, which is a double negative. And I promise you that does not lead to positives. However, I always felt like Isaiah Collier's feel for the point guard position, despite being turnover prone, would end up boating better for him because even at this period in time, he understands that he isn't the best shooter. He understands what the limitations of his own offensive game are, but he also understands what everybody else on his team can do. And so he relies on his veterans to help him along the way. And because of that, he's more likely to scan the floor and know where guys are supposed to be. It looks like he studied the playbook very well, I would say, and he 
not just for the fact of understanding where everybody's supposed to go, but also understanding where everybody's going to be at any given time when he's on the floor. Now, he did only play about 25 minutes in his most recent game and shot three of nine from the field. He was three of three inside the arc. And remember, I said he's fine inside the arc. The problem is outside the arc where he shot 0 of six, which is a pretty substantial sample size. They weren't all smothered shots. And the more concerning part was the fact that he was one of four from the free throw line. Now that is a small sample size and I don't wanna to talk too much about that, but that three point shot, at the very least the attempts, that six is kind of crazy because the only person that shot more than him was Larry Markkinen with seven. Everybody else shot no more than three. And if you're going to take six, he might've just ultimately had the green light and a lot of those shots were shots that you should ideally take. But you also have to remember, if I'm not particularly great at shooting threes, even if this is a pretty decent look, if I'm 0 for 3 already, 0 for 4 already, that fifth and sixth attempt kind of get a little bit rocky. And when you haven't seen daylight all day, it puts you into a mind space where you feel like you're doomed to fail if you shoot this shot and you lose a little bit of confidence in yourself. So I kind of wonder if he does end up hitting a couple shots, say he maxes out at like two, three attempts a game, even when they dial back his minutes when Keontae George is active in games because the reason why he got his first start and got the opportunity to play this many minutes was because Keontae was out. I think that we could see a different side of him from that standpoint, but right now that three point ball is just not a part of his bag. Nevertheless, he did manage six rebounds and four assists, which was in a three way tie for second on the team. And he also had one steal, one block and get this, no turnovers. Now, remember I said that he was extremely turnover prone. Even his box club plus minus was a positive one and the Utah Jazz ended up beating the San Antonio Spurs by one point, 111 to 110. Not to say that, you know, we should blow this singular performance out of the water and blow it out of proportions, but it was a pretty good showing. The only thing that was really put on display as well as a really big negative that we already knew was a negative, but just kind of really got thrown in our faces was his lack of a three point shot because six attempts is a crazy lot. Because if you take out even three of those attempts and you say he goes oh three from three well that means he shot 50 percent on the game he was three of six because he hit all his shots on the inside of the arc he made good reads once he drove inside the lane he made good reads even outside the arc when he was looking at just making the extra pass and getting guys into the actions but when you take into account the fact that he just was completely horrible from outside the arc it kind of takes away a little bit of the progress that he made but again this is just one game I just wanted to go ahead and throw this out here because I don't know how many minutes he's going to end up having going forward. We saw, for example, as soon as Larry Markkinen went out, Kyle Filipowski got to feel that role, but then the first game back, Kyle Filipowski got scaled right back down to minuscule minutes. But then in this game where Isaiah Collier got to start, Kyle Filipowski also got to see a uptick in minutes at the expense of one Bryce Sensiball, as well as Svi and Drew Eubanks were also inactive for this one, and he got to see 24 and a half minutes. So we're gonna see a lot of ups and downs, ebbs and flows with minutes, but I think that Isaiah Collier is slowly and will continue to slowly build a resume that speaks for itself and shows that he could be a more preferable uh, person at that point guard spot, at the very least by comparison to Keontae George, who still seems to be struggling mightily. With that being said though, it's your boy Wraith Hoops. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How do you feel about Isaiah Collier's performance in their most recent game that they ended up winning? And what do you think will ultimately end up coming down to when it comes to Keontae George's minutes, as well as Isaiah Collier's later on in the season, when we have a decent sample size of games and game tape to tell the stories of both of them and their developments as NBA level point guards. With that being said though, it's your boy Ray Hoops. Go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications, drop a donation, or become a member to help support the content. And as always, good morning, good evening, and good night. No matter where you're on the globe watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.